Hey guys, I'm going to show you a quick trick here on how you can add a hidden field into a phone site's funnel. That way, if you wanted to pass along a, uh, a variable along to maybe MailChimp or some other uh, third-party application, uh, you can do this, and you can do it for tracking. So a use case for this might be, and this actually came up the other day from one of our users, uh, he was looking to integrate MailChimp with phone sites, he wants to automate adding in tags to particular users in MailChimp. The reason for that is he wants certain tags applied for certain users. That way it'll kick off uh, an automation for a campaign. So he mentioned that he has the same landing page that he wants to use at events. And then he wants to use the, the same landing page for uh, other purposes, but not at those events. And he wants to be able to track who goes through the landing pages same landing page, just slightly different, different URL. He wants to track who goes through which landing page, have the data go through MailChimp, and then have just uh, a subset of those persons uh, get into a campaign. Okay, so I'm gonna walk through that really quickly. Um, I've got two different pages set up here. So we've got, as you can see here, I got an awesome hidden field landing page. You can't see my hidden field, of course, because we're just asking for first, last, and email. And then I've got a very similar landing page with, again, first name, last name, email, but there's no hidden field. If we go back into phone sites for the with hidden field landing page, I've got a very small snippet of code in here, which I'll give you. Uh, but basically, you're going to drop this into the custom code section under the settings tab and you can change where I have in here. Let me see if I can blow this up real quick so you can see this a little bit easier. But basically you're gonna change two different things. So you're gonna have whatever you wanna call your, your uh, hidden field. So in this case, I just call it custom ID. I could make it whatever. I could make it like the word tree or Chevrolet or uh, I don't know, like America or something like that, right? And then this is gonna be what value I want to add in for that field, right? So like in, a, in, in essence, magic is going to be like what they would have added into the field if it was a visible field as opposed to a hidden field. So one thing that's important though is you got to have this custom ID match whatever you'd have over MailChimp. Again, assuming that you're using this for MailChimp. If you're using something else, you'll need to have it match exactly over there. In MailChimp, for the data to go through appropriately, uh, from phone sites over to MailChimp, you got to set up what are called merge tags. I'm just going to show you that really quickly. So these are the merge tags, and each one of these has to match exactly with what we have back over in phone sites. So if I go back over to the design tab real quick, I've got a first name field, a last name field, an email. So if we go back over here, we got first name, last name, email. I'm not asking for phone in, in the phone sites page. I could. Uh, but then I also added in this custom field called custom ID. So this has to match one for one exactly with what you got back over in our hidden field, right? So the custom ID, everything after the form data dot and before the equal symbol, that's got to match exactly. And then I could put this to, again, I could put that to whatever I want. In this case, I'm just going to call it magic. And then I'm going to go ahead and save my page. It's already saved. <clears throat> Let's just decrease the size of that real quick because I don't need it that large. All right, so our page is good to go. No hidden field here. The next step is, so I already have my uh, integration set up between MailChimp and phone sites. Um, I, you can see right over here, so here's the MailChimp. Uh, you actually set up the MailChimp integration on the config tab, but I've got it set up already for this site. And then I've got it going into the right audience. So I'm good between um, the connection between phone sites and MailChimp. The next step, though, is got to add in an automation in Zapier. Uh, now, MailChimp doesn't have an automation already in place through their platform for automating adding in tags. Tags are added in over here. They really want you to do this manually. And I think the reason for that is they want you to make sure that there's a little bit of logic in place and they don't want you to rely on automated logic, which is what I'm showing you here. 
But I think they want you to go in and manually apply tags to individuals. That way you're not putting individuals into the wrong uh, automation campaign. So, um, so there's really no supporting documentation out on their site for this. I even searched YouTube for it and so forth. Couldn't find anything, but I come up with this other method that I'm about to show you. So I've got this random tag that's added in here. And we're going to add this through Zapier. So if we go out to Zapier, first of all, in Zapier, you're going to need to connect to phone sites and MailChimp. I've already done that, so I'm going to go ahead and um, start the Zap setup. So let's go ahead and click on either Create Zap or Make a Zap. And we're going to search for MailChimp. So click on MailChimp here and choose a trigger event. In this case, it's going to be a new subscriber. So that new subscriber is going to be someone that's opting in to either one of these sites. Okay. Click on continue. And then here in a second, it should give me the option to, to click on continue. Oh, I got to, I got to select my uh, MailChimp account. Select continue. And then it's pulling in uh, some fields here and then we'll click on audience and I only have one audience set up in here So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that one audience and then click on continue Now test trigger. So this is um, a step that always occurs whenever you're setting up the trigger step It basically it's looking for data if I didn't have any data already uh, added through MailChimp I would have to go in and add that in um, through you know, for my landing page I would set like a, a sample lead going through to MailChimp so it's added it back into my audience here but I've got some samples in there so we're just going to we're going to have Zapier pull that in it's going to look for the most recent one test trigger so we've got some sample data and you can see right here so it's looking for those merge fields here and we've got F name L name and then phone and custom ID if we go back over here so we have F name L name I didn't put in a phone number and when I submitted it last time, there was no custom ID. So moving along, let's click on continue now that we've got our sample. Next step, let's add in a filter. Filters are powerful with Zapier. Okay, for a filter, I'm setting this up. This is going to be my logic that I mentioned before that you need to have in place in order to apply tags in certain situations. In this case, I want to apply this test tag and I could have called it something else it could have been like party or something like that because our phone sites user that was asking me about this he wants to use uh, one of the funnels at a party so I could have called this party right but I'm just gonna call it test because I'm testing this out so let's go back over here so I want this filter to only go to the next step that I'll add in in a second I only want it to add a tag if in the previous step, it finds uh, if it finds my hidden field set to magic. So let's go back to Zapier. So we're going to select show all options. And the options that we see here, this is all data that's coming up here from the previous step. So we want to find that uh, custom ID. So merge fields, custom ID. So let's click on that. And then choose condition, text contains. Now you've got a bunch of options in here. You gotta find the one that's gonna be exactly for what you want. Text contains is sufficient because I'm just looking for that value of magic. Now if I made a typo here, if I put this like uh, magic or something like that, it's not going to work because we're never gonna send through um, M A G U C. We're going to send through values of M A G I C or no custom ID hidden field magic from this page. So it's going to be one or the other, either magic spelled correctly or not. Okay, so we've got our logic in place. I could add in more uh, steps if I need to, but this is sufficient for the logic that I need. So let's go ahead and click on continue. And as you can see here, it would not have continued because my sample up here did not have a custom ID. Click continue. Now we gotta add in another step. This last step is gonna be another MailChimp step. This is where we would add in our tags if this passes in the previous step. 
Okay, choose action event. We want to add a tag. So add subscriber to tag. Click continue. And select our MailChimp account again. Select continue. Okay, we've got one audience. I'm gonna add in my audience here. If you have more than one audience, you definitely need to make sure that you're selecting the same audience that um, you would have had added over here. This is an audience field. You wanna make sure it's adding into the, the right audience uh, or a right list or whatever um, as what you'd be adding over here. Otherwise, whatever leads that be going through your phone sites funnel, if it's going through a different audience, it's not going to match up with those leads that would be showing up over here. So make sure that you're consistent in what you're picking. But I think most of you guys that are using MailChimp, you're probably just using one audience. Okay, let's go through tag here. So tag, we've got just the one tag. If I had added multiple tags in here, you would start to see, if I had like four of them listed in here, you would see four tags available for options here. But I only got the one. Now, email address. Email address is going to be a value that was listed uh, up here. So let's click on new subscriber in MailChimp because that's going to get us back to the data that came through from MailChimp when there was a new subscriber. So click on that and then let's expand this to show all options so we can find that person's email address. So right there, email. Perfect. And then click continue. Test and review. And so this would add in a tag if my custom ID had a value. So let's go ahead and turn our zap on. Let's test this out. This takes a while sometimes for it to turn on. Uh, I should have named my zap. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. This is going to be phone sites uh, automated tagging. MailChimp. Uh, get in the good habit of trying to put in the softwares that you're using for these zaps too. Um, that way you'll understand a little bit, a little bit uh, better. I mean, maybe six, six months down the road, you'll understand like why you set up this app so you don't actually delete it. Uh, let's go back. Okay, so our zap is on. Now let's go ahead and test this. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit some data through these two pages and then we'll check back in uh, MailChimp here. And I would expect to find any data that comes through from these two to be uh, either with the tag or no tag and it should have a tag if there's a custom ID now if you're looking at this row here before it did not have a tag but since I was testing in that last step for my zap it automatically sends it through as a test just to make sure that it's actually going to work okay but now here's the real test actually testing it after this is turned on so with our hidden field in place the zap set up I would expect to find that this should add a tag so let's let's say Chris McCoy, and we're going to call this uh, video attempt with hidden field at gmail.com. Okay, so that's not a valid email, but this will work. So when I go into uh, MailChimp here in a second and refresh the page, we're going to see that this is going to have both a custom ID value set to magic and a test tag. So let's go ahead and select let's go. Let's go refresh this. So there we go. We got video attempt with hidden field. My email is kind of truncated there. You can see it pulled in my first last name. And we've got magic set for the custom ID, that hidden field, and then a test tag added in as well. Now let's go and test this out with our other landing page that does not have the hidden field. So let's call this Chris McCoy and no hidden field added. At. All right, so now our logic in Zapier is going to not add a tag and there will not be a uh, custom ID added in. So let's go ahead and select let's go and let's refresh this. And there you go. So no hidden field added at bluewhalepod.com. It's got our first last name and you can see no custom ID, no tag. All right guys, so our phone sites user that was asking about this, now he can set this up and he can have an automation set up for a, a campaign to start start in emailing this guy if he's got the tag added or if it's the other way around if he wanted to email 
these guys that don't have the tag added. If you have any questions, let me know.